which is going okay. You want some exi Derek Carr is showing a completely new side to him. I was pissed. <laughs> There we go. That's all I'm saying. I'm a competitor, bro. Oh, go ahead. Flex on him, Derek. <laughs> go ahead and show him. In week one of the regular season, the Saints absolutely dominated the Carolina Panthers. Carr proved his own team's fan base completely wrong. Last year, the Saints fans booed him at home. Exactly. The fans here are booing. And they spent the entire offseason begging for rookie quarterback Spencer Rattler to start over Derek Carr. And a lot of Saints fans who hated on Carr are now switching up and being positive. But don't worry, we kept receipts. Eric, enjoy the win. Yep, God bless you. Who that? Let's break down the new gangsta Derek Carr, who showed some swagger in this game, yelling at the Saints crowd, saying, I told you. And let's take a look at what the Saints could do next week against the Dallas Cowboys. It was not just fans and bloggers who disrespected Carr in the offseason, but also so-called NFL insiders and analysts. Social media was excited about the fifth round pick rookie quarterback Spencer Rattler, who looks like a T-Moo version of Patrick Mahomes, so that led to some insiders making some bold claims. NFL insiders like Diana Russini started some drama about the Saints quarterback room. She even claimed that some people inside the Saints building think that Spencer Rattler could possibly take over if Carr struggles. The text I received was from someone in the building was like, the vibes are really, really high. Capital letters, Ooh. right? If Derek Carr doesn't pan out, they have a lot of confidence, confidence in, in, in what their backup and Rattler can do. But Chase, okay. we got to keep an eye on this one. Diana Russini works for The Athletic, and she has been called out before on some of her reporting, most notably by Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers. I didn't respond to Diana Russini, I think her name is. But like, I would say the same thing that I told Sheffy, Shefty, lose my number. You also had ESPN's Mina Kimes try to push the narrative that Spencer Rattler could beat out Derek Carr. You really could not build a quarterback in a lab more different from Derek Carr than Spencer Rattler. And I think last year, Saints fans soured pretty quickly on Carr. I mean, the thing with Carr, you know, is that if the protection's not good, he's got, he's not a quarterback who can overcome that. She bought into the social media hype surrounding Rattler, and she even boasted that on her fantasy football team she added Spencer Rattler for when Derek Carr is inevitably benched. Even Matt Bowers, a popular diehard Saints fan and local car dealership owner, said Rattler is the best quarterback on the Saints roster and it's not even close. This guy got way too pumped up over mediocre performances against third stringers in preseason. And of course now he's switching up, pumped up about the Saints' upcoming game against the Dallas Cowboys. This was common. This was in the air. Barstool Sports even made a post saying that Saints fans are going to be demanding that Derek Carr gets benched this season for Rattler. And of course, the people who know what's really going on with the Saints knew this was complete BS. Spencer Rattler is not even QB number two. He was inactive for this week one game, and instead, the former Fresno State quarterback Jake Hayner was QB two behind Derek Carr. And look, Derek Carr is an easy target because last year, Saints fans were frustrated with the offense during the season, and that led to him being booed at home games. Exactly. The fans here are booing. Carr even received hate on X from Michael Thomas, a former Saints wide receiver who is currently unemployed, by the way, and he tried to blame Carr for his lackluster season. And it's just so lazy to blame the quarterback because the Saints had so many problems on their team outside of QB, and despite all the drama in the air, Derek Carr led the Saints to a 9-8 record, narrowly missing the playoffs last year. But despite these facts, that did not stop the NFL media world from disrespecting Carr. They even ranked him 26 among quarterbacks in this past offseason, literally trying to say he's the sixth worst quarterback in the NFL. In training camp, Dennis Allen, our, our head coach, put up all those rankings of players. Does that affect you at all? And I can't wait to put that on display. So you're saying, yes, it affected you a little bit. <laughs> I, was I was pissed. I was pissed. <laughs> There we go. That's all I'm saying. I'm a competitor, bro. And look, I'm a Raiders fan who still hardcore roots for Derek Carr. And I've even had a lot of Saints fans tell me that they could only stand watching my coverage of the Saints because so many of the content creators and bloggers of the Saints are so negative about the team, the offense, and the quarterback Carr. 
But after this dominant performance against the Carolina Panthers, all of that is going to change. But let's never forget the bullshit they said about QB1, Derek Carr. In the beginning of this game, Carr started off hot in the first drive, launching a long bomb on third down to the speedy wide receiver Rashid Shahid for a touchdown. The Saints offense instantly clicked unlike last year where they would only get going in the second half. Carr also found his tight ends. His second touchdown pass was to another former Las Vegas Raider, and that was the tight end Foster Moreau, who made an amazing jump ball for this red zone touchdown. Moreau would not be the only tight end that would get in on the action. Carr also found the former wide receiver turned tight end, the physical freak Juwan Johnson. Johnson caught a touchdown on an amazing throw on the run. The Saints scored on nine consecutive drives against the Panthers, and this game was already completely over by halftime. The Saints had 30 points while the Panthers only had three. And Carr showed his toughness, man. Despite battling so many injuries last year and never missing a start, he was so pumped up that he even lowered the shoulder on fools during this game. This honestly scared me, and I think that Carr should be a lot more careful. But this was amazing to see. He was having so much fun out there. And honestly, I haven't seen Carr just completely not give an F like this in a very long time. It really does seem like we're going to see the car that we've seen before in 2020 and 2021 with the Raiders and 2016 with the Raiders. The guy who was playing at an MVP level and was one of the top QBs and players in the entire NFL. Carr was even flexing on the Panthers and it pissed off the cornerback JC Horn. Horn tried to talk trash on Derek and he clapped back at him, letting him know that he's got three touchdowns, three touchdowns on you. The Saints put up five touchdowns and Carr was yelling at Saints fans during the game saying, I told you, I told you. He wanted to remind those fans that they doubted him. And this was great to see two former Raiders balling out for the Saints. You have the former Raiders head coach Dennis Allen calling a great game on defense and also QB1 Derek Carr. All they could do is just smile at the performance. Dennis Allen also gets tons of hate from Saints fans. Maybe this is all finally going to stop this year. And it's great to see some Saints fans admitting that they were completely wrong about their quarterback. You have this hilarious meme where this person said, all I have to say to Carr is dot, dot, dot. Your Honor, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, confess your sins, your main sin, which was doubting DC4. We also have this Derek Carr apology form for Saints fans to fill out. My favorite one is the quote unquote, the media coverage convinced me he was trash and also quote, I don't actually watch the games. And that's the thing, Derek Carr always gets disrespected in the NFL media. And I feel like these Saints fans don't know him as well as Raiders fans. And I feel like Carr always gets disrespected because he's not hip and cool. He doesn't curse up a storm. He He's a family man who also puts his faith above everything else. And just because he praises the Lord, people act like he's soft when really he's one of the toughest quarterbacks in the entire NFL. And he proved that last year when he played battling injuries. Obviously, the negativity in the air totally pumped up Derek Carr. But I also wonder if this little interview he did with John Gurdon, his former head coach, really pumped up Carr. You know, I really don't like the beard, just so you know. I want to come on <laughs> record. I do not like facial hair on you, man. What's the deal? <laughs> I knew uh, you were going to say that. I knew yeah. <laughs> Gruden interviewed Carr on his new YouTube channel, Gruden Loves Football, and it was absolutely hilarious to see the two reunite. And really, I think they should keep this up. I wonder if Carr is going to do more pregame interviews with Gruden before every matchup. I'd love to see what he has to say after this game. The Saints defense was absolutely elite last year, and I think Dennis Allen doesn't get enough credit for that. And they look like they got even better this year than they did last year. Bryce Young had such an awful game, and I almost feel bad for the former number one overall pick. The dude had so many overthrows and turnovers, and he just never looked comfortable at all whatsoever. And of course, the memes came out after the game. You had this circulating on X of Bryce Young at his new job, Raising Canes. At this point, athletes cannot do commercials anymore without getting roasted. You even had this happen when Desmond Ritter got cut by the Cardinals, and what 
resurfaced online was his old DoorDash commercial, as if that's his new job. The new Panthers head coach Dave Canales was supposed to save Bryce Young, but it looks like that is not going to happen. Canales also famously co-wrote a book about battling his corn addiction, and I think after this frustrating game, he's definitely going to bust the laptop out and load up that lotion. But even though I have been praising Carr this whole time, this was a true team win for the New Orleans Saints. The defense looked amazing as usual, and the offensive line got even better. Last year, the Saints pretty much had no run game because they could not get any push with that line, and it was a completely different story in this matchup. Alvin Kamara got over 100 all-purpose yards and a touchdown, and Taysom Hill looked like one of the best spell running backs you could possibly have. He was dominant. Alvin Kamara is incredibly popular among Saints fans, and I really like the fact that he went out of his way to praise Carr to the fans. We all we all want to see Derek Ball because I mean we see it in practice, and then you know he 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 put so much into it, and he wants to be great. He wants to you know he wants to be perfect to see him be able to go out there and and you know get some of those shots that he wanted and you know that he that he knows he can hit in front of everybody. It's like okay, yeah, I got I got it. I, I told y'all without saying I told y'all. <laughs> There are some car haters, whether they be Raiders fans or Saints fans, who are still not giving Derek Carr credit, and they're saying, oh, he only got lucky just because it was against the Panthers. He just got lucky. Even though the defense is a strength of the Carolina Panthers. But it is true that the Saints have a much tougher task next week playing against the Dallas Cowboys on the road. And the Cowboys completely dominated Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns in week one. Dak Prescott just landed his brand new contract along with CeeDee lamb and both of these guys seem like they have not lost a step and they are instantly clicking but if the saints go on the road and defeat the dallas cowboys that is going to show that they are absolutely for real and are serious nfc championship contenders this year but when you look at the entire nfc because jordan love did suffer an injury it is pretty much wide open for a couple of teams it's going to come down to the lions rams of course also the eagles also the dallas cowboys and quite possibly the Saints or the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers did look good in their first game against the Washington Commanders, and they are definitely going to be a factor in the NFC South, especially considering the fact that the Falcons looked horrible and lost week one against the Steelers. I was live this past Sunday for the Saints matchup against the Panthers, and I'm going live for every single Saints game and Raiders game on my channel. So if you want to hang out with me during the game and react together, make sure you join me on this channel live. And hey, if you know a Derek Carr hater in in your life, make sure to send them this video. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out, and I hope you have a good one.